trail invites you to witness the nature in Chisholm Creek Park through the interpretation of local artists painting in plain air style at the Great Plains Nature Center. Landscapes with stunning fall colors will fill the artist's canvases as onlookers find artists along the quail trail of Chisholm Creek Park. Once inside the Nature Center, you can soak in more art through nature photography. Courtesy of the Wichita Audubon Society, the 2022 Audubon Photography Awards exhibit is now on display in our lobby. We are the first location in the country to feature this exhibit. And new to Art on the Trail this year is an opportunity to create a community art masterpiece. Local artist Charles Bowman, known for his captivating splatterscapes of the prairie, will direct our splatters into a stunning landscape of a scene here in Chisholm Creek Park. We invite you to join us for Art on the Trail at the Great Plains Nature Center Saturday, October 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Fire Safety Week. Uh, we have, or Fire Prevention Week, uh, which runs from o October 9th to the 15th. Uh, cooler temperatures have begun to creep in, and now it's time to light up the furnaces, and we want to ensure that homes, and uh, just as importantly, our neighbors are a as safe as possible. Uh, so with that, uh, we have Jose with us, who is going to tell us more about um, fire, preven or fire Prevention Week. Uh, and what, what we have going on at the Wichita Fire Department to help prepare people. Thank you, Mary Whipple. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, since 1922, the National Fire Protection Association has sponsored the public observance of Fire Prevention Week. In 1925, in 1925, President Calvin Coolidge proclaimed Fire Prevention Week a national observance, making it the longest running public health observance in our country. Fire Prevention Week is observed each year during the week of October 9th in remembrance of the Chicago, the Great Chicago Fire, which occurred on October 8th, 1871. This year, the Wichita Fire Department is again teaming up with the National Fire Protection Association October 9th through the 15th. This year's campaign, Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape, works to educate everyone about simple but important actions they can take to keep themselves and those around them safe from house fires. Lorraine Carley, Vice President of Outreach and Advocacy of the National Fire Protection Association said, today's homes burn faster than ever. You may have as little as two minutes or even less to safely escape from a home fire from the time the smoke alarm sounds. Your ability to get out of a home during a fire depends on early warning from smoke alarms and advanced planning. The Wichita Fire Department has some safety tips for your fire escape plans. Make sure you have working smoke alarms in your home. Make sure you plan your plan meets the needs of all family members. Make sure that you know two ways in and out of each room. Have a meeting place on the outside and practice your fire drills two times a year. Wichita Fire Department will be hosting a series of events throughout the week uh, October 9th through the 15th. Um, beginning Monday, we will be at Benton Elementary and St. Anne's Catholic School with our mobile prevention unit. Tuesday, we'll be at Cedric County Zoo for our fifth grade zoo adventure. Wednesday, we'll be at the North YMCA for our fire science program. Thursday, Station 1, we'll be installing child passenger safety seats along with that evening at NASCA Park for our fire safety program. And then Friday, we'll be at Reflection Ridge Senior Living Center. Any information, additional information you would like, you can contact the Wichita Fire Department at wichitafire.org or at dot .gov or 268-4441 and follow us all on our social media sites. Also occurring this weekend, Mayor Whipple. Sorry. Also occurring this weekend is um, our Wichita Hot Annual Fire Program or Fire Conference. <clears throat> this weekend, October 7th, 8th, and 9th, over 300 firefighters from all over Kansas and surrounding states will be attending Wichita Hot Hands-On Training Training Conference. Wichita Hot is basically was created back in 2007, and the goal is to teach excellent, aggressive fire tactics to attendees who might not have the access or funds to attend larger fire conferences. Wichita Hot is a collaboration between the Wichita Fire Department, Derby Fire Department, and the Fraternal Order of Leather Society, Fools of Oz, 
This weekend, if you have any other information that you would like to gather from Wichita Hot, you can visit wichitahot.com or even contact a point of contact that a press release will be released on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So Wichita Hot, that sounds like a hashtag. I don't know, Megan. Think we can? No? Okay, no. Uh, so <laughs> next, uh, thank you, Jose. Uh, so with that, we're going to talk about Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, this week during the city council meeting, uh, we were able to uh, proclaim, uh, proclaim at starting stating that the city of Wichita would recognize on Monday, October 10th as Indigenous Peoples Day. This holiday is celebrated across the United States and commemorates the shared history of history and culture of Native Americans. The Native American Community Resource Coalition will commemorate Indigenous Peoples Day on Saturday, October 8th at the Mid-American All Indian Museum. And of course, that's located on 650 North Seneca Street. So again, that is October 8th, uh, which is a Saturday. The trailer Tears Memorial will begin at 1 p.m. Uh, with a blessing, reading of the proclamation, and a and a walk around the drum on the back in the backgrounds of the museum. Uh, this walk honors those who suffered during the Trail of Tears and ensures that the memory of that piece of American history is remembered. The event is free and open to all members of the public. Community resources and health uh, stations will be on site to administer flu shots and COVID boosters, as well as offer free blood sugar, high blood pressure, and HIV testing. So it's a hands-on project, and there will be games uh, available for children uh, on site as well. So please bring the family. And now I'd like to invite up Emily Hurst of the Kansas Humane Society to discuss a weekend adoption event coming up this weekend at the Humane Society. And Emily, I got to tell you, you have uh, been doing an incredible job of uh, talking about the importance of adoption of pets to the extent where uh, now my wife is averaging a new dog every few months. Uh, so uh, appreciate your work. Uh, it's definitely paying off in my household. <laughs> Hey, we got to have the mayor on board with this whole right. situation if we're going to do Wichita, um, it's due diligence. So I just wanted to be out here again today. Thank you all. It's awesome to be out here at the Great Plains Nature Center. It's such a wonderful asset to our community. Um, awesome announcements about fire and the indigenous peoples. Way to go, guys. Hashtag so Wichita hot. <laughs> Um, so the we have an adoption event. It's actually starting today. It opens up at uh, 11 a.m. Um, all dogs and cats are $25, and we we're just still suffering from an overpopulation of animals here in Wichita. We really need to get focused on spaying and neutering, and we're suffering some of those effects from the pandemic as well. When we weren't, when the community, all of the communities weren't able to complete spay and neuter surgeries to reserve those medical supplies for um, human causes, and so right now our community's just working really trying to work to band together to focus on this massive intake that we have. We have over a hundred dogs available for adoption. Um, so many cats and kittens. It's just really un unbelievable. So anybody can adopt from anywhere. You don't have to be a local Wichita or Sedgwick County resident. Um, so we really encourage you to come out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're open 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And um, it's incredible, $25 to be able to adopt a new best friend for your house, for your family, whatever you'd like. And that comes with spay neuter surgeries, vaccinations, microchip. Um, it's a really great deal. And we're thankful to all of our donors and volunteers that make that mission possible. And thanks to the city for helping us partner so that we can continue to save the lives of the animals that the lost and found ones that get sent to Wichita Animal Services. Thanks again. Of course. And Emily, uh, yep. I think it would be important. And if Future, if we can get a date for you to come in with one of the puppies and walk around City Hall, I think uh, some of our folks would appreciate that. So <laughs> anytime. <laughs> so uh, thank you again, Emily, uh, and for everything that the uh, Kansas Humane Society is doing to ensure that pets get a good home. So next, uh, I'd like to invite up Councilmember Brandon Johnson, who's with us today, uh, to discuss a community meeting in District 1 about the polluted area at 29th and Grove. So Councilmember Johnson. Thanks, Mayor. It's always good to have the mayor in District 1 and great to be here at Great Plains Nature Center. Uh, we are having that meeting with KDHE on November 5th, Saturday, November 5th at 1 p.m. over at the Boys and Girls Club, 2400 North Opportunity Drive. Um, that meeting will be from 1 to 3 and several partners will be there, KDHE, the Sedgwick County Health Department, some city of Wichita staff and electeds on various levels to represent that area. 
to make sure questions get answered from folks who are concerned about the groundwater and soil contamination. Uh, real quick history on that. It's believed to have happened in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, it was discovered in 1994 as the city was beginning the 21st Street revitalization. And in 1998, found out it was Union Pacific Railroad who did it. And since then, some things have happened to reduce the level of contamination, but it's still nearly 200 times higher than it should be. So it's important for all in that corridor. There will be flyers coming out. We'll be knocking those doors uh, either tonight or tomorrow. So before the end of the weekend, you'll have a flyer on the door. You have until October 16th to provide public comment. The link will be on that flyer. Or you can go out to the Maya Angelou Branch Library anytime during business off, uh, hours and there's a file on hand that has the corrective action and we also have computers there if you don't have access to internet to uh, give your public comment so again you have until october 16th to give that comment and then on november 5th we want everybody who can to be at that meeting to get their questions answered about this groundwater and soil contamination it's a serious issue and we want to make sure everybody's informed and that we can do something about it uh, as you may have heard it's also 14 million dollars to uh, do that corrective action, and it's my understanding that the Union Pacific who did it should be the ones responsible for taking care of that. But we will have all of that information at the uh, November 5th meeting and hope to see as many people there as possible. Now, thank you, Mayor, for giving me a chance to remind folks again about that. Absolutely. And thank you for, for all your work on this issue and particularly pulling not just the community together, but other elected leaders on different levels uh, of, of government together to pay attention to this important issue as well. So the winter ready, winter weather readiness. So this Saturday, October 8th, uh, please join us at Jardine Middle School from noon to 2 p.m. for a free winter weather readiness event uh, with our partners at Kansas Gas Services, United Ways of the Plains, uh, South Central Kansas Economic Development District, Wichita District 3, Salvation Army, and the Wichita Fire Department. Our partners will be offering free resources for everyone. Uh, Kansas Gas Services and South Central Economic Development will be distributing 500 weatherization kits that can help residents save up to 20% on their energy bills once installed. United Way will be distributing books for children, uh, 211 referrals on bank Bank on ICT will help you establish safe and affordable bank accounts as well. The Salvation Army has provided free coats uh, for children and adults that will be available as well. The Wichita Fire Department will also be available to set up appointments for free smoke detector checks and installations. Uh, the event will happen rain or shine. For more information about this event, please check out Wichita District 3's Facebook page. Uh, and for more information about how to save on your utility bills this winter, please visit kansasgasservice.com slash energy tips. Finally, I want to invite the entire community out to Wichita's ne to next week's public forum at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October 11th in Lotus Hall at Botanica. Uh, we will have a forum uh, where we'll be able to interview our, our potential uh, uh, police chief candidates. The community uh, will be able to submit written requests, uh, questions uh, to the candidates, and there will be a meet and greet afterwards. So we have taken note of questions so far uh, from the community on forum and social media, and we'll be sharing those as well. Uh, we invite everyone to come out, and you can find more information on the candidates at wichita.gov slash WPD chief search. With that, I'll take questions, and then I believe we're going to take part in the community art project uh, at our media partners, and our media partners are welcome to watch me try my hand at some painting, which is not going to go well, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, just open up for questions before I paint stuff. I'll call on you. No? All right. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. And I'm available afterwards if folks uh, want to dive deeper into anything that uh, we talked about today or really anything we have going on in our community. Appreciate folks being out here and um, look forward to uh, being available throughout the week. Huh? Time to paint. Time to paint. And it's time to paint.